Well, here I am, and I'm back doing a video of my garden. Haven't done one for a long time. And so I thought I would just do a tour around of what's going on um, and what's been happening this summer and, and all of that. So um, without further ado, I'm going to start here on my deck where I have behind me my green stalk. We actually had quite a bit of produce. My dog likes to eat the spoon tomatoes. That's Luna. Um, we had a lot of little spoon tomatoes that were really quite tasty. You can see little tiny ones there. I The only thing you can really do with spoon tomatoes really is just eat them. <laughs> That's okay though. This parsley, I do not know what happened. It was all beautifully green and then half of this down here got yellow and I know it's not from a lack of water because you know it was green through wet and dry so anyway um, not sure what's happening with that so that's the green stock now let's take a look at what else is going on in the yard I am kind of disappointed in a few things. You stay, Luna, because we had um, recently just coming around our squash bugs again. We had squash bugs last year, and they really decimated some stuff. I thought maybe they wouldn't come back this year, but they are back, and so we're going to try to see what we can do to remedy that. But they are on the zucchini, which actually didn't do that well anyway, and. Um, and the butternut squash, which is really disappointing. But we're gonna go down here, and I wanna show you something interesting about the squash bugs. If you're not interested in bugs, and you maybe don't wanna see anything weird like this, maybe fast forward through it. But I, I find bugs very interesting. And um, let me just show you here what's going on. Okay, so. Here are the squash bugs. If you don't know what they are, this is what they look like. They tend to congregate. Uh, they just kill your leaves of your squash plants. And really by this time of year, honestly, um, squash should be done anyway. But I'm gonna do something disgusting. I am going to take my finger and I'm gonna squash a squash bug. That's right, squash a squash bug. I want you to notice something. So, when I squash one of these bugs, do you notice that? The green, almost teal blood that comes out? How strange is that? You know, they always say that uh, royalty is blue-blooded. Well, I don't consider these royalty, but that's such a strange thing, isn't it? Very, very strange. But I think also very curious. Okay, so we did have a couple things that happened. We had our groundhogs early in the season that really created a lot of destruction, and we also had a hailstorm. And um, I had tried to put a really pretty pot of geraniums here, and they got just destroyed by the hail, didn't really come back. We were able to weed our strawberries, and I think they're going to make it. We're going to, we did plant some more this year. We're going to put some, um, some kind of mulch on them over the winter. Looking pretty good. Oh, the mosquitoes are horrible out here. We're gonna try to get through this anyway. Ugh. <laughs> mosquitoes are crazy. Um, sadly, we also have squash bugs on our pumpkins. So, see, we did get we are getting some pumpkins. There's one that's ripe in there now. We're gonna to need to pick that. We have a couple more on the vine. Um, hopefully they'll be ripe before the squash bugs completely decimate this area. Okay. And over here, we did some work on our raspberries. We did all the trimming, tried to keep them in. Um, these are red raspberries. The blackberries are down here. We did some trimming down here with the blackberries as well. And um, we did have quite a bit of harvest from both of those. We also have our neighbor that has a lot of blackberries. So we have many, many 
blackberries in the freezer and we made juice we made pulp so we can make um jam and all of that so we'll be doing that later on for me it's just good to just get things in the freezer so that then you can later when you have more time when there's not so much other produce coming in you can make whatever you want so here's the back end of chester our new rooster hey chester <laughs> he is young hey chester hey bud i've got to get out here and handle him though i don't want the same issues I had with our last rooster who was pretty aggressive okay we did get lots of beans this year lots and lots of beans we have um, we have both bush and um, some pole beans you can see the ladder there my husband was using that to get the beans on the top of the pole beans we also um, are gonna have loofahs again but this is the last year I'm going to actually do loofahs for a while. We did them last year, we're doing them this year, but we have enough. And um, we also have a ton of peppers. I've been kind of waiting to harvest them until um, I had tomatoes so I could do salsa. And here, a lot of them are, we have some paprika, can never pronounce a shosho frito or something. I don't know. And we have um, some shishitos. We have king of the north, sweet peppers, jalapenos, not pinos. These are habanadas. Aren't they the most interesting? Look at these little, they're almost a light yellow or a white. Very interesting. Very interesting peppers. So we do have those as well. Our tomatoes, they're uh, really, so many are now ripening. It was just a really late uh, produce because of the issues with hail and all that. Okay, my husband's going to be mowing in the backyard around, so just bear with me. But you can see this always happens with tomatoes. They get diseased by the end of the season, and that's very normal. Had a lot of romas. So like I said, I did some coring and scoring put them in the freezer when you do that it can take you can get the peels off very easily if you've never done it that way i used to take my tomatoes and put them in just a real quick boiling water the peels also come off that way but this way if you freeze them core score put them in the freezer then you can wait till later and you don't have to get to them right away so it's um this week hopefully or next i will be doing some tomatoes i believe we have a lot of butternut squash. However, we do have squash bugs. And this morning I did spray them with a little bit of baking soda water. I have heard that works. We will see. Take a look at the pond. Um, no, we did not get the duckweed off this year. We tried methods, several methods um, with no luck. So I, I really don't know what to do about that. But I do love my pond, so the aerator's working. It's, it's a good pond. It's just a problem with the duckweed this year. Okay, so this is a plant called the obedient plant, and it got struck by hail. I thought it would be completely gone. If you've never had an obedient plant, they're just a cute little perennial that, oh my goodness, my mother gave me years ago, and it honestly doesn't do well. Um, but look at it. This year is beautiful. Isn't it the cutest little thing? But I want to show you some other beautiful flowers up here. The front to the meandering garden um, at the roadside. And it's absolutely beautiful. It did so, so well. Um, in fact, probably so well that some of the flowers fell down, as you can see in just a moment. We got some laying down there. But look at these gorgeous zinnias and cosmos. Look at these gorgeous sunflowers. We have leaning over, of course, but that's the way it goes. Lots of different colors of zinnias. We have marigolds here. More beautiful sunflowers. Um, zinnias, I mean, there's all of your, I particularly love, these almost look like a pastel, almost like, I don't know, I think of sherbet. When I look at them, I think they're gorgeous. Show you our black raspberries, which did well. We're going to trim them back a little bit more. We got some long stuff going on. 
Um, but we do have over here a lot of kohlrabi. We also have a couple heads of cabbage, which I think we're going to get a couple more. Um, so maybe we'll get four or five at the most of the cabbage. Over here, our leeks are coming along. This is right next to the beautiful meandering flower bed. Leeks are doing beautifully as they do every year for us. We've had them. I am also going to show you over here. Um, we do have rutabagas, which I'm not doing again. The rutabagas, I just don't think they did that well. And I'm not like super excited about rutabagas since I grew them. I know I can do it. They're just, they're not my favorite thing to eat. And my beets had a great beets. So I need to pick the rest of the beets here, finish them up. I, I froze and pickled some beets. Um, parsnips, not sure I'm going to try those next year. They didn't do great, didn't come up well. And then I do have here some purple sprouting broccoli that I did plant about um, six weeks ago. Um, never have luck with that. I don't think I'm doing it right, but I'm going to keep trying. The cherry tomatoes are finishing up here. Um, one of the other things that we do plant that grows so well is arugula. This is our second planting. They're like microgreens now. And mm, just really love them. It's very peppery. Mm, so good. Very bitter. I won't say very bitter. A little bitter. So good. Love them. Over here, I have my beans that I've been planting every, uh, for the last couple of years. These are the black beans. We had an issue with morning glories. I should not have planted. Actually, I lied. I didn't plant them. They just can't, volunteered. I didn't pull them out. Coming up again, but I'm not worried about it. Um, so this is my black beans. We have the cow peas. These are my beautiful four o'clocks flowers gorgeous they just receded i didn't um, get any from the seeds i planted and then we have of course the runner beans next year i'm planning to have some fava beans as well here and um four o'clock are going to be moved squash bugs since we've had issue for two years in a row now is that they like to overwinter and can overwinter with um vegetation so this year my plan is to pull out all the vegetation, not just do a chop and drop, which I was doing. I'd rather just pull all the vegetation out, we'll, we'll mulch, and then hopefully won't have an, a squash bug issue. Um, in here in the greenhouse though, my figs actually had, grew a couple of little figs. I don't know if they're gonna do anything. I'm finding this very interesting because my friend has a fig and they have it outside in the winter it does beautifully and it just they have to cut it back it's so prolific i'm afraid to do that my last fig even died in the greenhouse over winter so i don't know this is my sweet annie i love it i'm going to try to do some planting of it outside next year such a oh the smell if you have never smelled sweet annie oh please do these are the mums we kept over the winter my husband kept them trimmed back they're not huge but we're going to take them out and decorate for fall and then i have carrots over here not sure what they're going to do i really don't think they got very big so i'll be yanking those up one of these days as well it's a real quick tour of my garden and what's going on i do want to give you a little tease because if you don't know i may have mentioned it before that um, during the pandemic of 2020 we started building a tiny house and i'm sure you have seen it i probably have mentioned it but um it's getting to the point now where we can do a tour of it if you'd like to see a tour of the tiny and i'm going to switch the camera around here and just kind of show you the outside and we'll get that that going pretty soon because my husband needs to be a part of that he's the main person who did that so this is a tiny and this is the outside of it of course we want to give you a tour of the inside as well and so if you'd like to see that we will do that in another video also i forgot one thing i want to run over here because i did plant sweet potatoes and got them in late because things just were really behind and then they got eaten off but they're coming back so i don't know if i'm going to get anything i really don't 
But over here, potatoes. And we did take those up, we got a lot. Another section of volunteer butternut squash as well. Oh, I just love them, they're so cool. So that's the garden tour. Do wanna show you one more thing, my beautiful Florence fennel, which is a bulb fennel. Never grew it before. I'm gonna get in here and take a look at how pretty it is. And um, anybody who has grown it, it must be time to um, get that harvested and start using it in some cooking. I did give some to my son, actually. He does a lot of kind of gourmet cooking, so we'll see how that goes for him. Ooh, hold on. Hello, praying mantis. Oh, how beautiful. I think they're gorgeous. Aren't they amazing? Oh, so, oh, hello. And with that, thanks for being here with me today. And until next time, stay rooted. Bye-bye.